So good. You've been so good, Lord. You've been good. You've been better than good. I can praise you. I hold you, my life. I can praise you enough. You've been so good. So good. You've opened so many ways you made, so many times you heal me. You've been better than good to me. So many ways you made, so many times you heal me. You've been better than good to me. So many doors, so many ways you made, so many times you heal me. Been better than good to me. So many ways you made. So many times you heal my body. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways. So many times. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. I was lost. I couldn't find my way. But to place me on a rock for me to stay. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. To me, you've been so good. You've been, hallelujah, so good. You've been so good to me. So many times you heal my mother, my father, my sister, my brother. You've been better than good to me. 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 Than good to me. MS King holding that down. You've been better than good to me. COVID can't hold Hughes down. You've been better than good to me. 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 You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good to me.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Let's pray together. Lord, you indeed have been so good. Your goodness is beyond our ability to find words to define or to be able to declare. All we can say is thank you. Those words seem so insufficient for all that we have received. So if I couldn't say a word, I would just raise and wave my hand. You've been good. I pray now that Ricky might die, that Christ might speak high be behind the cross. May the words be heard be the words of a risen Savior, who offers both spirit and life everlasting. For it is in his name and for his sake that we pray. Amen. Welcome to the virtual worship of First Baptist Church West on this, the first Sunday in August. And as you're tuning in, you're already noticing the difference, aren't you? We're standing behind a brand new pulpit that had been ordered and had been uh, on back order for some time because of supply chain issues, but it finally arrived this week, and we are so thankful and glad to be able to stand in this sacred place behind a sacred desk. We're grateful to the donors that made this gift available to the congregation and to the church as a place for men and women to stand and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. A lot's happening at First Baptist this month of September. I just want to share with you a couple of things that we're going to be doing over the course of this month. On the last weekend in September, we're going to be celebrating Back to Church Weekend. Back to Church Weekend. As people have been taking breaks from the summer, or even if you've been taking a break because of COVID and your uncertainty, unease about returning to in-person worship, we want to extend to you that weekend a special invitation to come and share with us in any one of the events that you're comfortable in doing so. On that Friday evening at 7, our men's ministry will be hosting a men's ministry gathering of fellowship and fun here at the church on that Friday. On Saturday, we'll have a cookout here at the church. More information will be made available and we'll have live music and an opportunity for more fellowship and fun. And then on that Sunday, our worship service again will be at 10 a.m. And in that particular worship service, we're going to be recognizing and honoring some special members in our congregation for their many, many years, right at 50 plus years of service to this congregation and to this ministry. So please mark your calendars. If you lived in the Charlotte, all roads lead to First Baptist that weekend. If you're a member of this congregation, we'd love for you to make the special effort to try to be with us at one of those events if not all three of those events. Look forward to talking with you soon. Look for more information on our church website about Back to Church Weekend and all of the activities that will take place for every age group to be able to celebrate fellowship and worship together. Amen. Now there's a word today that I want to lift that is found in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 14 and begin reading at verse 6. Thank the music ministry for blessing us so wonderfully well. Then the sons of Judah drew near to Joshua at Gilgad, and Caleb, the son of Jephnu, the Kizanite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord spoke to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me at Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought word back to him of what was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt with fear, but I followed the Lord my God fully. So Moses swore that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance to you and your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God fully. Now behold, the Lord has kept me alive just as he spoke these 45 years from the time the Lord spoke the word to Moses when Israel walked in the wilderness. And now behold, I am 40 
I am 85 years old today. I'm still as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so is my strength now for war and for going out and coming in. Now then, give me this hill country about which the Lord spoke on the day for you heard on that day that Amkin was there, the great fortified cities, for perhaps the Lord will be with me and I will drive them out as the Lord has spoken. Pray with me, if you will, for a little while today from this subject, a lesson in commitment. A lesson in commitment. Last week, the longest serving mail carrier was recognized at a small service of cake and punch in a local post office in Oklahoma City. Johnny Bale has been a mail carrier for 70 years. He started when he was 23 years old, and his entire career has been spent in Oklahoma City working out of the same post office. After a small celebration, he went of cookies and punch, he went back to work sorting out mail at age 93. Now that's commitment. Sort of like the time the chicken and the pig was walking down country road and they saw this hungry group of young children. And the chicken said to the pig, somebody ought to do something about that. Why don't we offer them a breakfast of ham and eggs? To which the pig said to the chicken, that would require contribution from you, but it would require commitment from me. It's hard for me to imagine going to the same job at the same place, doing the same thing for 70 years, but I know it had something to do with commitment. The story of Caleb, a little known figure in the Old Testament, is a lesson in commitment. Caleb is one of the 12 spies that Moses sends out to the land of promise to bring a report in order for the people to know what to do next. When they return from the land of promise, they bring with them the witness of God's goodness in the land. However, the majority also bring back a report grounded in fear, not faith. The report of the majority focuses upon the difficulty of the land. The land is filled with men of war and we appear as grasshoppers in their sight. The majority offer a report filled with caution and hesitancy and reluctance. Caleb offers a different report. He does not deny that the land is occupied with men of war, but he does declare that we are able to succeed and conquer the land if the Lord goes with us. Caleb's report is bathed in faith because he has already seen what God has done and what God can do. He'd already seen what God had done with Pharaoh's army. Caleb's report is grounded in possibilities because he's already made their, they've already made their way out of Egypt and out of slavery and slavery is now in their rear view mirror. And slavery should not inform their present actions. However, the majority report won the day because once the people heard the majority report, their hearts melted. It's now 45 years later at the time of this text. And again, the people are making their way to the land of promise. They've already fought the battle of Jericho. They have suffered through the sin of Achan at Ai. They have seen the sun stand still in order to win the battle against a federation of five kings that stood in their way. And as they approach Hebron, Caleb comes to Joshua with a request born out of commitment. He reminds Joshua that he was one of the 12 spies that Moses sent out to search the land. And the only ones left are he and Joshua. 
He tells him he was 45 years old when he first stepped foot in the land of promise. And although the majority brought back a report that led to years of wondering, he has fully followed the Lord. Now he's 85 years old. And the Lord has kept him alive and his strength is today as it was 40 years ago. So now give me this hill country. Even though it is occupied with fortified cities, it may be that the Lord will be with me and I will drive them out as the Lord said. What was it about Caleb that had him so committed that he was willing to take on a fight at age 85? At a time when persons are looking for a rocking chair, at a time when people are looking to take it easy, at a time when people are looking to talk about the things that they used to do, Caleb said, I'm as strong now as I was then, and the Lord had promised me this land, and here we are, so give me this hill country. Why is Caleb so committed and willing to take on a fight at age 85. Here it is. First, Caleb was clear to who he was committed. His commitment was to God. When Caleb reminds Joshua about being one of the original 12 spies sent by Moses to search out the land, he is telling Joshua about his level of commitment. Spying out the land was a dangerous job. And if caught, it could lead to death. But Caleb was willing to take the risk as an indication of his commitment, not to Moses, but to God. Caleb viewed Moses as a man of God and a man that God was using. And Caleb could make the distinction between discerning a person that God was using and following them because of God as opposed to blindly following some man. Our country is in turmoil now because there are some that claim faith in Christ but are eagerly following with a man absent of any God consciousness. There's a long list of churches and communities that have witnessed confusion and disarray because they could not discern the difference between following a person or leader versus what it meant to follow Christ. Caleb knew who he was committed, and it was not a man. Caleb was committed to God. Caleb was so committed to God that even when he was not selected to succeed Moses as the next leader of Israel, he does not allow envy and jealousy to gain a foothold. He demonstrates the same loyalty he had shown Moses to Joshua because he believes that God is using both of them. He's willing to do whatever is asked of him. He's willing to do whatever he needs to do to honor God and show what it means to wholeheartedly follow him. Caleb's commitment to God provides a model for others in the community to follow. We have been blessed in this church to have persons who have shown us through the years what it means to be committed to God. Their service and their sacrifice and selflessness has allowed the doors of this church to remain open for 155 years. Commitment to God is what united them to build a Christian witness in this place, and we are heirs of that. Commitment to God is what is required now, even as it was then, to keep the flame of faith bright in this place. Caleb was clear to who he was committed, and because of who he was committed to, he was unafraid to ask for a fight at age 85. Now give me this hill country, which the Lord spoke on that day. Caleb is clear on whom he is committed. He is committed to God. But secondly, Caleb is clear why he is committed. He is committed because God has kept him and used him. I love the way the text says. He says, I am now 85 years old and the Lord has kept me alive. <laughs> 
boy, I can shout right there. Caleb understands that he has not survived 40 years in the wilderness because of good fortune, nor has he survived the numerous battles that Israel has already fought because of his tactical ability. His survival over the last 40 years had but one explanation. The Lord had kept him alive. Had it not been for the Lord who was on his side, he knows he would not be here at this moment in time. Caleb's faith acknowledges the keeping power of God. You want to know why we're still here? After we have gone through and still going through signs of a pandemic, it is because the Lord has kept us here. The Lord kept Caleb alive. Caleb has not only been exposed to potential dangers in battle and in the wilderness, but he's also been exposed to the deterioration that time brings to all of us. Oh, I love this. However, at the age of 85, he declares that his strength now as it was then. I'm still strong. I'm still as strong 40 years later as I was 40 years ago. The same strength that God gave me when I spout out the land is the same strength that I have now as I stand in the land. And though the years have come and gone, the constant has been God's empowering presence in my life. And I'm still strong. Ah, I have strength for whatever purposes are required. Strength necessary for battle if I have to fight but also strength necessary to determine what needs to be done. Caleb is not just physically strong, but he is mentally and spiritually strong as well because the Lord has kept him and empowered him as a sign that he was not through using him. Caleb's commitment to fight comes from a recognition of what God has done for him and what God is doing for him now. Now, as I have become older and began to think about what it means for me in ministry, it's a delicate dance in discerning what God wants me to do versus my own expectations about what I think I ought to be doing. Caleb, in 85 wants to keep fighting. He's not interested in sitting down, taking it easy, advising the younger crowd. He says, no, put me in the front of the line. Give me a, a sword and a shield. And with the help of God, I'm going to go out and conquer the land that he promised me. Caleb knows why he is committed. Because God has kept him alive. And because God has used him. Caleb believes that God is still using him. And in the process of using him, God is building a witness of what we can do and what he can do with a person who is sold out to him. The barriers that we would place on service and sacrifice are no barriers to God, and he proves it to be so in Caleb, the man at 85 who is looking for a fight. Caleb was clear on why he is committed because God kept him and used him and he believed that God would use him again. But there's a final thing that the text helps us to see. Caleb is committed not because of who he knows he's committed to and not because he's just clear on why he is committed, but Caleb is clear on what he expects because he is committed. Mm, mm, mm. Caleb believes that God is a rewarder of those that seek him. Caleb does not believe that faith and service to God is in vain. And although the blessing sought might be delayed, surely it will not be denied. It had been 40 years since Caleb stood this close to Hebron. But he remembered what God told him 40 years ago. He remembered what he heard Moses prophesy about him 40 years ago. 40 years ago, he had heard 
hold on, Caleb, and hold out because a day will come where every place that your feet walked across on that ground will be yours as an inheritance and an inheritance to your family as well. Caleb had been given a promise about the blessing of God in the land of promise and he would not let go of the hope that one day he would be a possessor of that promise. Caleb expected God to honor his word. So Caleb stayed faithful. No matter what others did, no matter how long it took, Caleb kept doing what he knew that God wanted him to do. Caleb knows it will require a battle to possess the land, yet his in order to get the land that he has requested, but he's willing to fight to receive God's promise to him. And although the odds might be against him, and the weapons of the enemy may be many, Caleb holds firm to his belief that no weapon formed against him will prosper. And although the cities may be fortified, Caleb believes the Lord can open doors that no man can close. <laughs> Caleb expects to receive the blessing that God had promised and the presence of God to see him through because of a commitment over a lifetime. Caleb is clear on what he expects because of commitment. This high school football season began, and this time of the year causes me to always remember my days on the practice field, not in the game. On the practice field and the hard practices that we used to have. Every day, practice would end with running sprints in full pads. And it would conclude with the team gathering at the bottom of a hill that led up to the locker room. The last whistle would be the signal for the team to run full speed up the hill. If the coach didn't think we were giving our all, he would have us to come back down and start all over again. The inspiration to give your all in part had to do with what was waiting at the end of practice. At the end was a hot shower waiting. At the end was a cool drink when we had been struggling in the heat of the day. At the end was the acknowledgement that we had completed the task. And at the end was a sense that we had worked so hard that when game time came, we would be ready. And when you are committed, you have no doubt that something worthwhile is waiting at the end. The fulfillment of a promise, the witness of a blessing, and the attainment of a goal. I close with this. My grandmother's sister, my aunt Rosie, used to sing a song in prayer meeting. Get your time in, children. Payday coming. After a while, <laughs> get your time in, children. Payday coming after a while. Caleb got his time in because he was committed. Get yours in because payday coming after a while. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the witness of commitment and an example of faithfulness. Thank you for the lessons that you teach us about Caleb and the opportunities that you cre create for us that we might demonstrate our own commitment. Now honor your word, may it not return into your void, but serve the purpose that you desire and design, that the glory might be yours both now and forever. For it is in the wonderful name of Jesus our Christ that we pray. And for his sake, we ask it. Amen. So we gather now around the Lord's table to observe the sacred rite of Holy Communion. We teach in the Protestant church two ordinances, baptism and Holy Communion. At the end of the earthly ministry of Jesus, he makes his way to an upper room to celebrate the feast of the Passover one last time with the disciples but this time he gives it new meaning. 
he declares that the bread that he gives to them represents his body, which has been given for them, and that the cup represents his blood that has been shed for the remission of sin and the opening of the New Testament. As often as we do this, we show forth our remembrance of his life, of his suffering, of his death, of his resurrection, but also of his promise to come again for a church without a spot, blemish, or wrinkle. So you and I are invited to come to the Lord's table because a way has been made and a debt has been paid. For those who are joining and sharing with us virtually today, if you would gather whatever elements that you might be using, let us pray God's blessings upon those elements that we might share together. Most gracious and all wise God, our Father, we are grateful again for table fellowship and for the blessing and opportunity that you grant us to share in this sacred rite. Bless now this bread and this wine that these your people so share. And we ask these blessings in the matchless name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Taking the bread in our hand, we eat together as one body in Christ. And like banner, because we have one Lord, we drink together. We're told that after they participated in that rite, they shared by way of song and went out to the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go to, but we do have places that we can go and share the wonderful meaning of commitment and how God always honors it, even if you're 85 years old. Receive now these words of blessing and benediction. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord give you peace, both now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen.